I guess now my mic's on. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's do it. All right. Dear Lord, may your goodness and love be present among us today. Come bless our gathering with unity, hope, and vision. As we meet today, come be with us. Breathe life into our thoughts, ideas, and decisions. Come give us the inspiration to be the best we can be. May we be a shining example of your goodness and truth within the workplace. Today, on their first day of school, we continue to pray for the families and friends of Uvalde. We also ask that you cover them with your great love. We ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Campos. Thank you, Roger. And uh, I'd like to now welcome some very friendly guests. Uh, from Tasby, which brought his crew with him. He felt he needed some backup. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Lloyd, did you have anything before we go right into this? No, sorry, I don't believe anyone signed up for public comment uh, uh, confirming that. And so I'd just like to also welcome Tasby and, and, and you know, the great folks there and look forward to, to working with Tasby and, and our trustees through the process. That's all, sir. Okay. Butch, take it away, please. All right. No. Well, it's good to be here with you. Uh, I'm Butch Felkner. I'm with the Texas Association of School Boards, and I've been with TASME now for over 15 years uh, doing superintendent searches, and we're excited about working with you folks uh, on your new search. You're going to receive uh, via our uh, great staff here, and let me introduce them, Dr. Marion Strauss. Uh, she's with Tabby. Tell them about you. I've been with Tasby 11 years, and I too am a retired superintendent. I spent about uh, 24 years in the superintendency and 34 in education, teaching and being a principal and all the other things. So. And Craig Stockstill. I'm a former superintendent. I, in this area, I was at Floresville and Marion. Uh, so I've, I've known about you all for a long time. Had the honor of calling them uh, Lloyd, the superintendent here for the last 13 years for Tasby. Uh, we're pleased for him and you uh, that we get to be here with the new transition. Uh, again, we're going to pass that. We're going to give you a couple of options, okay? Since uh, this is going to kind of be a, a year-looking thing towards the end of next year, so you're going to get an option A and an option B. So, you know, once you get that, then we'll go through and, and we'll kind of whittle it down from that point, all right? And just to clear it up, he's talking when he says here he's talking school year. School year. <laughs> okay. Um, if you'll notice, there is a little difference between option A and option B. Option A uh, basically has you uh, hiring your new superintendent uh, right after the first of the year, January the 5th. Option B has you actually moving that all the way to February the 16th, giving you a little bit more time in there. So uh, those are basically the two options. I know there's, you know, well, it's going to be here you know, through the end of the year, so you know, that's why we wanted to give you two options. I kind of, we got some feedback that we kind of wanted to get it going and get it out there, but then also, you know, we don't want to rush it uh, through the process. So uh, I'm just open. What we'd like to do now is just take it down to okay, which one works best for you? Which one do you like the best? And uh, then we'll, once we decide on which one of that you like the best, then we'll focus our attention on that particular timeline. So your thoughts? Okay, and, and I see they're both uh, respective of uh, holiday times, so Thanksgiving, nothing that week, right. and Christmas, nothing that week, okay, both of them. Now, and after the vote to hire, which, correct me if I'm wrong, we wait 
21 days. That the vote to hire is the end. The naming of the loan finalist is you wait the 21 days okay. after the vote. The naming so, of the okay. loan finalist. Vote to hire, that's it. So your vote to hire date is actually it. That's so superintendent end. reports to the district would depend on superintendent leaving their current. That's, that is correct. Okay. Uh, you know, if it is a seated superintendent, you know, it might be a while before that person would report. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's an Deputy superintendent or assistant superintendent, and that, they'd be a little faster. And that could be it. part of the conversation during right. the final and, interviews. And once you get down to when you get down to the applicants, you'll be able. And once you get down through the interviews, then you'll be able to see, you know, who's yeah. who's in the mix, and that way you can better determine, you know, on, on when they will come. But that's you know usually negotiated out with the school district and the new person coming in. So are we voting on this today, A, B? Or we're we're just it? giving feedback, We're right? just going <coughs> to narrow it down to A and B. Yeah. Just uh, oh, oh, we're getting down to it. Me personally, or do we give an opinion to you? Sure. Okay, so me personally, I would prefer to do the February 16th and not um, try to, um, you know, go faster, um, especially uh, given the, you know, with the December in here. Um, so your, your opinion is a B. I would rather give us a little bit more time. Sure. Right. I think B also just because the preparing for the follow-up interviews and then the follow-up interviews falls right around Thanksgiving. So mm -hmm. Thanksgiving the 24th. On A. On yeah. A, I'm sorry. Yeah. So I think B yeah. is probably a better option. You say B? Mm -hmm. I like the longer timeline as well. B. B. Well, I think that's taken care of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Focus in on option B. Then. So you can forget about option A. Uh, so let's talk about option B. All right. Mm -hmm. Now you're already, it's already out there, it's already uh, online, and you know, it's been. Applications going everywhere, and so it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, you're going to get a, a great many uh, applicants in. So what ne what's the next thing that we have? Well, we have a community survey that we're going to uh, uh, be putting out there probably in, a, in the next week, and it's going to go on your district's website. Okay, it'll be attached to your district website, and anybody can go online. And uh, staff, uh, community members, whomever can go online and fill out that survey, and it, we collect it. No one in this district can see what anybody else is writing. So once they hit that button to take them into the survey, it takes them directly into our system at TASB. And so they can write whatever they, they'd like to write, okay? So the questions in the survey are, what are the top things that are going well in the district? The second question is, what do you see as the top two or three concerns you see facing the district? And then question three and four are basically, what personal characteristics and what professional characteristics are you looking for in your new superintendent? And so what we do with that is we, we run that, and as you see here, we're going to run that all the way out through October the 13th. And uh, you will, once you, we collect all that information, then on October 14th, we're going to send an email to you, each individual board member, with all the information that we've collected on the survey. Okay, so that way you'll be able to see the survey, read through the survey, and see what everyone has responded and how they've responded and things like that. So you say, well, what's the purpose of that? Well, the purpose of that, well, we're going to get to in just a few minutes, okay? So, um, well, actually, the leadership report actually comes to you on the 15th of November, since we're going to be. So I'm still back in A. So uh, it's going to come to you on November the 15th. That's when it shuts down. You'll get it on the 15th of November. Oh. So that's when you'll be getting it. The application deadline date for you, which does not involve, these do not involve any meetings. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to come up to a meeting or anything like that. 
The application deadline date will be Tuesday, November the 29th at midnight. Okay, that's when the applications for the position will close. All right. On November the 30th, you will receive two emails from us, and it will contain, number one, it will contain the information on how to access the applicant information. And the second email will contain all the applicant's information that who've applied for your position. So you'll get to see them all. Now inside that now are inside our application is not only the application itself, but also videos of each candidate that has applied for the position. And so they respond to three different questions and you get to see them in the video. So you get to see who they look like, what they look like, as well as how they respond to these three different questions, okay? Also in that is, is the, uh, their resume, their transcripts, and their certification. So all that stuff is inside this email of each applicant who applies for the job, all right? So you will get that on November the 30th. So be looking kind of that star that thing that even though it's not listed on here, that's when you'll be getting it. So if you get to the December 1st or 2nd, you say, wait a minute, I thought I was supposed to get something from TASB on the 30th. You be sure and let us know because we'll something went wrong or it might be in your spam or something like that. So you know, just check it, but we want to make sure you get that. All right? Now, if I, are we all up to speed together right now? So I don't want to lose anybody. If you have a thought or question. I, I just have a question. Sure. So the survey goes on till October 13th? Uh, well, I think what happens is we're going to put it online on the 13th. Online on yeah. the 13th. Okay. It goes online on the 13th and then it's going to run the 13th until you get it on the 15th. Okay. Sir, I have a question. Sure. So um, having the survey online is like it's pretty passive. Are we going to do like push notifications where we we have, you know, our parents uh, through various electronic means, we can push the link out to them. Are we going to do that? I would hesitate putting the link out there. Sometimes we've had this happen before. People have, School, a school district took the link and put it out there and what happened it opened it up for people could see what everybody else was writing so what we ask districts to do is push out a notice of where they can find the link which That's is on your district's limiting. website there's no way to fix that or to do the be well, do better we've, we've tried that before mm -hmm. and there's really no way with this particular company that we use uh, to do that uh, so, we just don't want to make it we don't want to make it a, uh, a situation where we get into that and, and it, it was quite an issue. And I think another thing is we can, we can provide paper copies both in English and Spanish and the online version is in English and Spanish as well. So if anyone's having any issues uh, getting to it, we can, you know, we just need to get the word out okay. through the schools. Right. It's still not very uh, I'm efficient. I'm confused. She's asking about a link. So the link takes you to a survey, and then other people can see what we wrote? No. Okay, so each link, when they tap on it, it takes them individually to a, a, a set uh, survey. And then how do you how do you confirm with the, how does that work? Because if it's a, everybody gets tapped into one link, um, it's not going to show up. It's a link that's set that is an automatic, like a, a, a button that you, you know, it's on your district's website, okay? Mm -hmm. And all they do is they go to your district's front page and they just hit, click that button or click that link and it takes them directly into our system, okay? Okay. And so after they're in our system, they can just fill out everything. Oh, okay. Nobody can see what's going on. The problem that we had is that in a district, they took that link and they sent it out and what happened when they sent it out, it opened up the opportunity for other people to see what was going on. And so we told them that they can't do that, that they, if they do that, people are going to be able to see what's going on, and they did it anyway. And lo and behold, that's what Roger, happened. Roger, excuse me, Roger, could we uh, push out the link to our website so that they just hit that, and then that sends them to the actual so link? So there's, there's a couple ways you could do it. 
uh, like I was explaining, you could, uh, as long as the link is the same, if the link is the same that we put on the website, it can be the same link that you put out on a push notification, either through a mine or uh, social media. But if, you, if that link were to change, that's probably what ended up happening. That link was, had like maybe like public, something got added on to the end of that link. Mm -hmm. That's when they were able to see the, the uh, that's exactly what she did. Yeah. So in this case, what would happen is that when we push out the link, we mm -hmm. have one specific link, which I would probably like just make it into something solid. Yes. That we push out. So no matter where we push it, it's the exact same link, and you wouldn't get that comment piece. So we have an IT department that would be able to protect us from doing that. Perfect. Because yes. well, it'll be the difference between having you know dozens of responses or potentially hundreds, right? Uh, yeah. You, you and will I, get, you yeah. will get hundreds. Mm -hmm. I would. I was talking to him, and the last time that what Butch was explaining happened, it was really the IT department that caused in that, that district to yeah. happen mm -hmm. in the district. But yeah. of course, Tasby was at fault yeah. through then because she wasn't going to take responsibility. Right. So no. we just try to make sure that um, we keep that from happening. Yeah. When we because the the problem that we get into is people. I say people, you know, staff and you know, different folks. They don't. They're afraid to say anything because they think somebody yeah. can see what what yeah. is what I'm writing, right. and what we say is no, they can't. Right. Yeah. You know, so that's what we have to make sure that they understand. No, you, you, they can't see what you're writing. Right. So, so all of that. Oh, I, I want to ask, but I haven't sent a letter out to the community. I wanted to, but I wanted to wait until I got closer. But I think uh, involving the community is very important. So can, could we coordinate, is okay with the board, a letter I sent out to the community thanking them for the time and you know, now it's time to engage the community in the next election and then maybe that's how we introduce the link? Sure. Um, kind of do it tandem. And we do have a press release that's available uh, that we send, we'll send to you. I, I'm not sure Christina has had a chance to do it, but it'll go to Mona and that's a starting point at least. Okay. Yeah, but I think getting that letter along with the first opportunity that goes away would be a good way to introduce it. Okay. We can do that. Yeah. We certainly can. All right, good. Anything else about the survey? And the link. Oh, okay. One more question for you sure. about the survey. On those questions for about characteristics, are those the same characteristics that you have us do at the TASB um, training that y'all had during um, leadership where there was a uh, Curriculum, or was, they get to pick out a sick. You say yeah, give us no, four years. Yeah, oh, that and that was more like I like that because it was just more like people would understand it better than having to write their own characteristics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, the yeah, I can see how I respond to this. Uh, that was a different division than what we are, and that was kind of a, a thing of. We're wanting just to kind of open this and get people's thoughts and how um, and how this division that's you know, apart from what our division is, and they were kind of cultivating. So this that was all kind of a brand new thing for all of us to be a part of, and so we haven't moved that to that direction yet. Uh, so it's still standardized with this, and so we haven't. You know, not to say that we want. It's just that we haven't moved uh, in that direction at this point. He may be asking about the Q&Cs, though. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the one that we did with uh, what's your name? Oh, but we do have standard Q&Cs. Q that's that in are, of the application. Yeah, that's embedded into the application that deal with communication, yeah. uh, public relations, all of those. It's seven things mm -hmm. that are all... Yes. Yeah. Uh, like uh, the financials. That's inside yes. the application. And that's part of the that's application. That's different than the survey. Yeah, and I, I just don't want the, the community to get like too like to, like to pinpoint oh they need this or they need that to where it's like insinuating that we need uh, say a cultural or something to where it if it if that's what they want then they pick it because I think that's the relative to where they may want to say in having more cultural or more relativity ethnicity but if they don't then they they don't pick that I just I just don't want it to be that relevant to it yeah. if, if it's possible. Yeah. It's a, uh, you know, that, what they were talking about in that session is kind of like a drop down menu of, you know, this is some, here's seven or eight or nine characteristics and, you know, pick you know, your top four or something mm -hmm. like that out of there. And what ours does is gives them an opportunity just to write what they're looking for rather than what they're looking for. Uh, 
uh, rather than, and they can say those things. They can say a good listener and you know, good communicator or, or finance person or strong academics and things like that. Uh, they have the opportunity of saying that. It's just not in a menu form the way it is set right now. I guess what we're saying or what we're concerned about is they may not have the vocabulary, the educational vocabulary to um, communicate, right? But they can, uh, they, they'll be able to say what's important to them. Mm -hmm. like, exactly. I mean, it, I don't, I think it's, we would get a better idea of what's important to them if they put it in their own words versus giving them 10 boxes and, uh, you know, like the multiple choice test. Mm -hmm. So I think, I, I mean, our parents, they, they can read and write, so I think they'll be able to express their own, instead of giving them an option of different things, they can express what they want. Yeah, I think you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised with this because, you know, this has been with us for several years, you know, all across the state of Texas, and, and it's, you know, the com number one, the community appreciates the opportunity that they have the opportunity to go <laughs> online and that you've given them the opportunity to, to give feedback on what they're looking for. So that's what we hear more than anything, is that we want to thank you for letting us have the opportunity to give the board feedback in this method that we can, you know, that they're actually going well, to Well, I would ask, could we do both? I mean, we were given under the impression we went to the superintendent uh, interview training that uh, we were given the impression that when we did that exercise that that was how it, the search was going to be conducted. But I mean, I don't see why we couldn't do both, right? Where you give them an open, a question that's open-ended, and then you also give them, well, what are the three most, because they gave, they told us to pick three. It was hard. It, it was, was really hard. hard to pick the top three. It was very difficult to really think about it. Um, I, don't, I don't know if that would be an option. I tell you, I'll tell you what we'll do. We will look into that, but I'm not gonna guarantee that's gonna happen, okay? okay? It just depends on how quickly we can get something like that set up, mm -hmm. okay? But I will tell you, I will, we will look into it. Yeah, sure. just an additional question, right? Sure. With those in the same in survey. the box, right? Can we get a copy of that survey before it goes out? Mm -hmm. Sure. We'll have that. We will send that to you. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not, I don't know if it's on our website or not. I don't know if the questions are on our website already. Okay. I just uh -huh. want to ask them how long they've been going to these meetings about interviewing for a superintendent. Uh, <laughs> years. <laughs> years. <laughs> 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 Okay. Just when so, we knew you were leaving, sir. No, we sir. <laughs> we waited. Well, no, we waited until you broke our hearts. Okay. Oh, <laughs> and he was there. Our president was there. <laughs> so on, um, you will receive that leadership report with all the information contained in it. As I said, on Wednesday, November the fifteenth, that will come to you in an email. And so you will spend, be able to spend time with it. Now, don't you know? When I was a uh, a middle school principal long, long time ago, I, we used to have campus plans and we were like, where are these, you know, once we got finished the campus plan and the board said, oh, that's good, thank you, and we just put it on our shelf and that was the end of the campus plan. So don't do this to the campus plan because you're gonna come back to use this, you know, later on. So, mm -hmm. so the application deadline date again, which is not a meeting, it's only for us, is uh, it's November the 29th and that's when the deadline, the, the application closes at that point. Now, when we get to the next dates though, these start the critical dates, okay? So this is, these are important dates. So, the first date is the review of applications. Now on application 29th, it closes. On November the 30th, as I mentioned, you're gonna receive the two emails of all the candidates' information. So what we want you to do is go through all go through all the applicants, and go through them pretty carefully and study them and things like that. And then when we come to together on Tuesday, November the December the sixth, we're going to go over all the applicants who've applied for the position. Okay, we're going to have information on our end that you're not going to have, but we're going to be able to share that information with you in that meeting, so you can make an informed decision. So the main thing, what we need to talk about now is how does December 6th look for you on your calendars right now? That's what I'm checking. Mm -hmm. I'm good. 
Everybody so else? if we get 50 applications, we're going to go through all 50 on the 6th? Well, probably not all 50. Okay. And I'll tell you how that's going to work. Okay. okay. I just want to make sure the 6th works okay right so now. So we should put it in our calendars if we're good, right? Right. Good. Not good. You know, we, we do a brown bag on that day already. It's already scheduled. Oh. Could we yeah. do that time? To Could we do it at, at this time? Could at this time, this meeting, be great. Will be, uh, this meeting will be about three hours. Yeah, I was going to say it's oh. going to be. This is the long meeting. <clears throat> Would you guys prefer to meet? I mean, we can do 11, it whatever time. I just 11 to 2 or 6 to 9. Well, I'd rather meet in the evening because I know uh, Daniel works and so does he, and I do too. So, so the no. daytime is not going to work for me. Mm -hmm. That's so it's going to have to be. We Maybe we just don't have the brown bag. Yeah, we just don't have a job. We just do the evening. You can bring your brown bag to the museum. Yeah. <laughs> could we start it? Oh, yeah, we could do a brown bag maybe the third Tuesday. When, oh, no, whenever you want to schedule it. Yeah, the second. Could, could we do the meeting starting at, what, what would be better, six or five? Could we do it at I five? I can be here at five. five. Could, could we do five? Sure, you can. Of course. We can, can I wait be there anytime you want. Five to eight? Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Yeah. Five that sounds better. December 6th, five to eight, and no brown bag. Okay. All right. We will make that December the 6th at five o'clock. If there's something that we have to. Lord, if there's something that we have to vote on or something that's critical, could we do it at. At that same meeting? Yes, yes, those have to be in a post meeting. Yeah, this will be supposed to be in closed session. So we okay. could just, if there was something we'll critical, we could still agenda. bring yes, it to a vote in the open Absolutely. session. Okay, yes. all right. And so we'll just post a closed meeting on that, that same day. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I brought up a good point. You have. Let's just say you have 50 applicants for the job. What we're going to ask you to do is support each individual board member and do not, we don't want you talking to each of you know, with your fellow board members on this. Mm -hmm. We want you to go through all the applicants and pick out from six to eight to ten candidates that you thought, hey, those, I really like those. Okay. And we're going to all bring that to a meeting, that meeting on the sixth. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go around to each board member and we're going to say, okay, who's your six or seven or eight or nine or whatever? And we're going to put those names on the board. And then we're going to go to each board member until every all board members have placed their candidates that they liked on, on the board that we're going to talk about. Okay? And then out of that number, what if it might be you know, 20 or 25. And what we're going to do then is that then we're going to discuss each one of those candidates. And then we're going to narrow that, or you're actually going to narrow that group down to right now you're scheduled for six to bring in for a first round interview. Now that number can change depending on the candidates for once we get to that meeting. But, uh, uh, but that's, that's the plan. So that way we'll have discussed all that information. You're going to have information based on the all the information that you're going to receive, we're going to have that same information, but we're going to also do some background work behind the scenes on each of these candidates mm -hmm. that applies for the job. Okay? And we're, as I said, we're going to share that with you that evening. Okay? So we'll have all that discussion going on during that time, and then you'll say, okay, these are going to be our six that we'd like to bring in for our first round of interviews. Okay? That's the that's one of the main objectives for that that evening. Okay, the second objective will be to, is to establish your interview questions. Inside that same email, there's you're going to receive 90, 98 interview questions, and we're going to ask you to select four out of the ninety eight and bring those four to that meeting as well, so we can also get that down to. Have interview questions. That's on November 30th? That, that, uh, you're, that, that's when you're going to receive these. Okay, when do we do December 6th. December 6th is when we're going to go December 6th is when we'll go over. And that's when we're going to decide on questions. That's correct. Yes. Okay. 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 Okay.
out of Candidates nine. that evening and the questions that evening. All that. That's why it takes three hours. And the good news is, you get if you're here, if you're present, you get three hours of board training credit that mm -hmm. as well. So that's a good thing. Most people think, most board members think, oh, good, I need those hours. So uh, that's also happens that evening, okay? Then we're going to go over how the first round of interviews works, okay? The first round of interviews is scripted. It's very, it, it's very matter of fact. The candidate comes in, you introduce yourselves to the candidate. The candidate then shares a little bit about themselves to you. And after that, then you ask all your interview questions, okay? It's just one and done and done and done, okay? So it's, you're asking the same questions, the same candidates, all through the thing. So there's no deviation in this round, okay? And then uh, after that, they're going to, the candidate might ask you some questions. And then after that, you're going to ask the candidate about the salary and what their expectations are about salary. That's, and that's pretty much the interview. It's a night, if you notice, it's a 90 minute interview. That's why it's timed on this particular round, because we're wanting to ask the same questions the same way to the same candidate, so that way you can compare apples to apples on this round, okay? So there's, like I said, there's no deviations. With this. In this round, we only have six by this point, or no? I'm sorry? In the initial interview round, it's six candidates? Six candidates, okay. right now, that's what we're going. That's the goal. That, as I said, that could it change. Could, could be eight. Yes, in right, the, after really we. feel right. strong about that. Okay. I mean, we've had as few as, you know, five, and we've had as many as nine, nine. Okay. candidates. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it varies on what, you, what you're wanting to do. Sure. So again, you're in charge of this. So, you know, we try to structure that part you know, with you. But there's only four questions? No, you're actually asking three each. So 20 21 questions. questions. So. Oh, okay. So we get to pick our own. It's yeah. not as a group. Right. Okay. 90, that's why I said, you know, come that evening with your yeah. questions that you like Everybody will answer. come with four questions. Okay. okay. And we say four Each, because And they will discuss. For example, if Flo, you have two that are very similar to two of mine, then we'll work on that. Okay. But we hope to get to three questions for each of us mm -hmm. to ask each candidate. Okay. That's correct. So how do we know, because you just said similar, so if we have similar... Because that meeting we're bringing, you're bringing four, I'm bringing four. Okay. We're going to read them. We're okay. Gonna okay. Them. okay. <laughs> you're not going to keep a secret. <laughs> you're not going to keep a secret, okay? You're going to read them. I'm going to read mine, and if one of mine is exactly Thank like you. one of yours, then we'll decide who asks it and who picks another one. Okay. Those get broken down by by uh, what we feel like superintendents areas that superintendents should be focused on, like curriculum, uh, like uh, leadership, planning, finance, different things like that. So you know, it's spread out. So you can, you know, I think there's like eight or nine different sections that you can select from, you know, and out of that, just bring it forward. Our questions have all gone through TASB legal, so we know they're legal, but if you have something burning, a burning desire to ask something that's not on the list, okay. as long as it's legal, we're, we're good with that as well. Okay. <laughs> Just run it by you in advance. Sure. Yeah. When we start doing this, because we're going to type them all up for you. Oh, okay. We're going to make sure everything's organized and typed up so that when you come to the interview, you, you just sit down and you can start doing, doing the work. Yeah. And we're going to go, the evening when we go over this on December the 6th, we're going to go over all that in detail. Mm -hmm. everything. So you'll pretty much know how everything's going to come forward. Now, do we have to ask the questions? Now, what if, uh, like, we hear the answers of what's going on and then we feel like, oh, they're a good candidate, and then you just say, well, okay, they're a good candidate. I don't need to ask any more questions or to, to insinuate. So can anyone, any one of us deter from not asking questions, or do we all have to ask mm -hmm. questions? You have to stick with the questions that you've selected for the first round. Now, the second round, you will be able to, okay? And because remember, the first round is kind of like I use the analogy, which is probably poor analogy, first year of law school. That's the way they do okay? That's the where this is where, where, remember, three are coming back and three are going away. And so the second round is when we're going to get down to really dive deep, if you will, with the candidates at that point. Okay. And on the second round, there are no scripted questions at the second round. 
So those are, these are your questions that you want to ask. That you said, man, I wanted to ask this question in that first round, but now I get to ask that question, okay? And Dr. Strauss is going to carry you through how the second round works and things like that. Okay, so after the first round, and I think it's important, Pete, that because we're trying to treat everyone equally, mm -hmm. that we go through the whole process. Yes, there may be some repetition. There probably will be because uh, the candidates will tend to tell you the things that they want you to know that are strong points of theirs. So there may be some repetition, but that's okay. That first round, it, it's okay. Just go through the whole process. At the end of the evening on uh, the 15th, which is the last night of the interviews on this timeline, unless we change it, you will stay and decide who your top three candidates are. So as a board, you will talk about it um, at that point and, and engage who it is that you want to bring back. Sometimes boards can't, the first one and two usually rise to the top, three and four is where it's a little harder, and they'll bring back four. There is nothing magic about the number six or the number three bringing them back. It's all part of your decision as a board. So. You will decide who it is. We will be there. Uh, we will come back in and go back over that with you. If you're stuck in any way, we can even come uh, the night that you finish the interviews. We can even do it then. But we will help you get through that, that process. Um, and then, otherwise, we'll come back on January 11th and go through the second round again. We're going to tell you we kind of just went over it. Second round interview, there are no set questions. Uh, it's one per evening. In our smaller districts, they usually bring the spouse. Does not have to happen. It, it's, that's entirely up to you. Larger districts, it's not quite as important that you all meet the spouse, but that's going to be a board decision. So one per evening, and we have those scheduled on the 17th, 18th, and 19th of January. And again, uh, if the spouse comes, if y'all decide you want to do that, then there's a short 10, 15, 20 minute social at the beginning where there's, you know, refreshments and you can visit with the other part of the family. But again, there is nothing that says you have to do that. And then you go into the second interview. Yes, sir. The 17th is our scheduled board meeting, I believe. Okay. So we we can change to Monday. How about Monday the 16th? Mm -hmm. 16, 18, 19? Yes. And then we'll That'd be okay. The 17th. So well, it's still captured because it's three days in a row. It's going to be four. Oh, 16, 18, 19? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. 16, and then they'll have their regular board meeting on 17, and then 18. If y'all don't already love each other, you're going to after we finish this process. I have a question real quick. Um, sure. You said you were going to come back to help us. Are y'all not? Is are any of you going to be here on the initial interviews? We do not attend the initial interviews, okay. and there are re there's a reason. We know all, we pretty much know the candidates, and we will have talked to them, and we all want you. This is your decision who you select us, and we have. Um, found that if we're there, the board will tend to ask, ask us, what is it, what do you think, what do you think about it? I guess my concern is, uh, who is going to be the, the Is that you, that you're going to be the greeter and say, you know, well, we need something, I mean, usually, somebody has to know. Usually, it's the administrator, it's, it would be Mona. Okay. Uh, if she's if she's agreeable to do that, that's who we work with. Because yes, you're right. They'll have to greet them and um, let them in when y'all are ready for them. But it it can be anyone in the district. We will ask them to sign the confidentiality agreement as okay. well, okay. so that um, so y'all are going to appoint somebody to do that for us, so that we're yes. Okay. We'll facilitate. I'm just trying to remember yeah. the last time right. I thought the man was. Right. I have a question. Um, the ninety questions that uh, we have, do the candidates have access to those 90 questions? No. So there's no way for them to prepare in advance. So what we're getting from them is gonna be 
Right. Raw data. Yes, they're, you're, they're going to be answering on the spot. And okay. that's something you're going to be looking at. We'll talk about that when we come in um, and review the applications is, you know, what to watch for, how they respond. If they ask you to repeat the question, mm -hmm. it's fine. Mm -hmm. But if they ask you to explain the question, it's not. You know, if they say, what does that mean? All of our questions are clear enough that they know it. That's a stall tactic. So we'll talk about all those things then. But no, they do not have access to the questions. And I know uh, for the semester this, Brett Baker, who was the president of TASB, uh, I made the mistake of getting to his district when they were doing the search. I, I made a mistake and got there early. And I said, okay, I'm only gonna, I'm gonna sit way over here in this part of the room and I'm not going to be a part of this, of the interview. So y'all go ahead and interview. That was my one mistake, because I said, after this over, with, please do not come up and ask me what I thought. All seven came up and asked me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I said, honestly, I think the candidate, he was slow in, in, in the beginning, but he kind of warmed up and got into it, and they went, boy, we thought he was great. I said, see, you shouldn't ask me. <laughs> and that's where it was. So anyway. That's why we don't come in. And the other is it, the reason is that we don't want the candidates calling us saying, well, what did the board say? Oh, in yeah. this way, mm -hmm. we can say, we don't know. Mm -hmm. We weren't there. And so that's, that's why we don't okay. The other thing I think we needed to mention, because I know it's a, a big concern about 50 candidates and then trying to, they are organized so that all of the sitting superintendents or the, super, the, the candidates with superintendent experience are in the first group alphabetically. And then you'll have the deputy and assistant superintendents alphabetically, the central office, principals, and so on. So if all of you as a board decide we're not interested in anybody that doesn't at least have central office experience, you don't have to look at the others. I mean, they're there for you. If you tell us to make them go away and not send them to you, we can do that too. Most boards want to see everybody that's applied just out of curiosity, yeah. but that they're arranged so that it won't be as difficult as a as it sounds. You can you can pick where it is that you want to cut those off. So follow up interviews again on 17, 18, 19. At the end of the evening on the 19th, you will decide who your candidate of choice is. And uh, we, we will contact that person and say, you're their person, here's what they're going to offer you, and then we'll tell you yay or nay. Usually, if they're coming back for the second round, they're in it to win it. They're gonna want the position. And we, I don't think we've ever had anyone say, no, we've changed our mind after the second round. It just doesn't happen. We have a site visit scheduled for January 24th. That's optional. <clears throat> if three of you wanted to go visit the home district of your one candidate of choice, we will set that up that you can do that. It, amount, it, it uh, involves, again, only three of you because of open meetings, and you would travel to the home district. We set up uh, help the candidates set up board members for you to talk to, community members and some faculty and administrative staff. And you have a chance to visit. And then we also encourage you to stop at the chamber, wherever else you'd like to stop in that community, we encourage you to do that. We have not had, uh, I've had one board since COVID started that actually went on a site visit and it was pretty much Two, two districts down, so it <clears throat> was fairly easy. But if that's something y'all wanna do, we'll, we'll get that set up. But that'll be something you can talk about throughout. And then uh, vote to name loan finalist is on Wednesday, January 25th. Uh, that's when the 21 days begin. And uh, vote to hire is scheduled for February 16th, which is the 22nd day after you name your loan finalist. And then all of the report dates are negotiable because you know uh, how long you want to stay and there may be some time that you want them to work together. Those are all great things. That'll be a decision that you will make as a board. Okay. 
Oh, and then after this that isn't on, we, uh, you will have access to our transition session. Once your new superintendent is on board, uh, LDS, either Kay Douglas, uh, Oren Moore, uh, probably Oren here, will come in and meet with you and the new superintendent and talk about those things that sometimes we just get too busy to talk about. Uh, talk about what it is you want to see in the first three months, what it is you want to want to see, what the accomplishments after six months, and then it's a good time to even start talking about the evaluation instrument that you're going to use at the end of the first year. All of those things need to be talked about so there aren't any surprises, so it's a good time to do that. You will get three more board credit, uh, three more hours of board credit for that session. And about 100% of our districts take advantage. There's nothing that says you have to do the transition session, but it's at no additional cost uh, to you. It's part of our, our process, so I would highly recommend it. Um, it just travel and expense of the for the for person coming here. Foreign or whoever's coming. Okay. There's no fee associated with it. Mm -hmm. Questions? Can we change the February 16th date vote to higher to like the day before? Um, if we don't go on a side, but it's it's there because of the 21 day. Oh, February 16th. It can 16th. be earlier than 16th. Yeah, it's okay. that's 22nd. If you want to, if you're not going to do a site visit, then we could name the loan finalist on the 24th, and then we could move it one day right. we'll, back. We'll discuss that. Later. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. We can, oh. we can move we can move the date out. Mm -hmm. We just yeah. can't move any. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we can move we'll it to the next again, we'll talk about it when we get closer. Exactly. And again, we can manipulate this. That's why we ask that you not make a motion to approve this because all we want to do is agree that this is the calendar we're going with because if we make a motion, we have to come back and make another motion to change a date or a time. Right. And this way we can agree that this is the calendar we're going to work with at these times and we go from there. Okay. And that way if we have to make a change, it's very easy to do that. Okay. As of now, I, I think we're good through the end of the year. Right? Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So. Can I ask a question about the beginning? Uh, maybe you covered this a bunch. So did you say the application is already open and out there? Or so when the board gets the information, they're going to receive an application, a video recording, and a VITA or a, a resume. Resume, resume. Um, and transfers. So what does that application look like? Is it just a general application? application? <coughs> Basically, it has the, uh, of course, all the campus information. A lot of it, what's replicated on the uh, resume will be inside that. But it will also contain, as we mentioned, the videos that will be inside there that each can will be responding to, so you'll get to see them, as well as their uh, salary, uh, you know, the criminal thing, all that kind of stuff is inside that general application, okay? And then it'll have their work history and that kind of stuff. But th that's pretty much it. And then their resume will be inside that, their transcripts and their certification will be in there. And did you say the application's already online? I uh, believe it is. Okay. It's not. It will be shortly. It's on the TASB site, right? Just the TASB website, and then it'll go to TASA, uh, which it usually takes them a few days to, yeah, to Texas post it in Texas ISD. A few days. And yeah. then I don't know if you mentioned that it will also be national because all of the sister organizations that we work with in the National Association of Superintendent Surgery, they all post our openings and we post their openings at no additional cost. So you will have some out-of-state candidates and it will be posted uh, throughout <coughs> the United States. Confidentiality. 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 Form. You were going to ask us to sign something? You're going to be receiving a confidentiality agreement. And what that means is, is once you receive the candidate's information, <coughs> It means that you will not discuss anything about any candidate to anybody until Gabriel blows his horn, and you know what that is. Uh, so the only person that you'd be able to discuss or talk about is your lone finalist. 
if somebody comes up and says, hey, did Dr. Strauss apply for this job? Say, they're not the lone finalist. You could say, I can't discuss that. So, because you're bound by confidentiality agreement, okay? And uh, we, you know, all of our boards, uh, you know, adhere to that because they don't want you as an individual, you as an individual board member can get into trouble uh, if you disclose anything and it causes that person to have a career issue. Uh, it happened very closely in one of our districts after we really carefully told them to do not do that. The board member did go out and the candidate almost, uh, almost, but didn't file the lawsuit. And uh, so we backed away. And so we don't want that to happen to anybody. So that's why we say, just if you have a question about anybody, you talk to us. We will, we will do that. But we can do that, and you're not allowed to do that as a board member. So it's just better to be safe on solid ground than. Yeah, I think it's important that we understand that most people that apply are not telling if they're working somewhere are not telling anyone until they become one of the interviewees you know so if, if it got out it, it could cause problems back back home that's exactly right and our candidates trust us that it is going to be confidential and the fact that they apply isn't going to be in the newspaper back home that they applied because the word got out so uh, we we take that very seriously and i know they appreciate it only one person is going to get to sit in that seat the rest of them all have to go back to their, their home district. So we try very hard to make sure that um, they trust us. And, and you've seen in some of the local areas you know, is what happens when word gets out, uh, you know, some of the problems that it causes. You know, so we don't, you know, we pride ourselves in that, not letting that happen. And so uh, we want to keep it that way. Because you're going to get the best candidates when it, it is closed. Nobody's out talking. That's you'll get top candidates for that. That's what we want. That's what you want. Any questions? I have one question. Um, somewhere along the way, you said something about uh, that you guys also do additional homework on the candidates. So when we we get the um, the applications and the resumes and all that stuff. What, so what does that mean, or when, when does that come, or do you share that with us, or? What we, our knowledge of the candidates, we, we do, we, you know, we go back and check on them and, and see if everything, if, if, see if everything that they've said actually their application is really okay. true. Yes. And so we bring that to you in that meeting on the six. Okay. So, so yes. if there's any questions or issues. We will share that with okay. you. Okay. We will share that with you. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm not going to stand up in front of you and tell you that we're, we might miss something. Yeah. But we, we do it. Pretty, I got in trouble with a lady and went way over to East Texas, and she got on me because I did not check something that happened 30 years ago with a candidate. I said, you're right. I missed it. I didn't check 30 years back. Yes. And, uh, and so she wasn't happy with me for not checking 30 years. And so. So can I ask you a question? Uh, what would be considered a, a conflict of interest in you no know, like with a candidate? Like if we knew a candidate, or like how does how would that work as a? Not necessarily if you know them, uh, but it would be if they're related to, you. Okay, like they're your brother or sister, or you know, something like that, whatever. And that's all in your policy, yeah. the whole nepotism thing. You can look in your board policy. Yeah. Your nepotism but policy. Other have. than that, um, you know, it's just a matter of keeping them confidential. You're going to know some of the applicants, there's no doubt. And they may call you and ask you, you know, what do you think or where do I stand? And the best answer is just, <clears throat> we've signed a confidentiality agreement. I really can't discuss that. Yeah, or tell them to call us. Yeah, or tell them to call us we, if they have We're any happy to talk to them. Questions. And you might even get a call from the media. Uh, the media might call and <laughs> say, you know, tell us about that. You tell them, call us. We will we'll take care of that. Okay. Now, we're not saying that, you, Mr. Vasquez, if they call and you want to get on camera, you can't do that. But if you don't want to, you can have them call us because. No camera. 
<laughs> no, yeah. How do you recommend setting up to our PR? Oh, that's, that's exactly right. That's perfect. Yeah, the PR. Yes. Well, she's got friends in little places. So I don't know. Oh, good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So, uh, Mr. Vasquez, this is all we have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Right. Yes, thank you very much. And we're here with you through the whole thing. We're even here after this is all over with, so don't take the word. We're just leaving. So. And we'll send you updates every couple of weeks that will tell you how many people have responded to your survey, so you'll have an idea of, you know, how that's working. And then we'll also tell you how many applicants have started their application and what they are, if they're sitting superintendents or assistants, no names, but we will tell, yeah. give you that information. Are yeah. you sending all of that through our school email? You tell us, whatever yeah, email, email, you tell email, email. 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 Mona, you can get that to Christina. If, if they want it, personal emails, that's fine. Yes, we just need to get that uh, for Christina. Okay. And, and you'll receive a lot of things from Christina McKee. She's our Admin, administrative assistant. She's, she's very good. She's your and Mona. She is, and she's <laughs> always available, and she can help you walk through if you're having any issues at all. She, she's there. Is there any issue with us using our personal email? No. Okay. Whatsoever. Right. As, as long as you're Christina McKee. Yes. Yeah. Okay. M-C-G-E-E. -E. That's what we work with you to do that. Letter in tandem. Yes, yes, and she will be sending over. If the position is not it's, posted yeah, yet. It's a, it's a process book. I mean, it's not a process book. It's a contact person booklet, and we'll send me send it to probably you and Mona. And it will have all of the postings that you need, the wording for all the postings. As all, well. the so all, all the agendas. All the agendas. Everything's done. And if you have any questions, you know, throughout this, you know, if you can't reach out to us, you can reach out to Mona. And they can get in touch with us, yeah. and we'll be happy to respond to you. So we're here with you. We're your team, and uh, so it's. Um, You'll see all of us yeah. again. We're not trying to gang up on you, but we just want to make sure we do. We appreciate it. Thank you again. Thank you very be much. Safe. Thank okay. you. Looking forward to it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Guys, we're about to take a break and, and, and have lunch. If you want to join us, you're welcome to. You know, I have a date with the outlet now. <laughs> <laughs> Priority, for sure. <laughs> On the way home, so. That's awesome. Okay, Roger, let's take a break. We're going to take a Thank break. Thank you. Just Thank you. Thank you. We'll see y'all soon. Good Thank you. 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 Okay, we're back from break, and it was only a break for us to get our lunch. It wasn't closed session, just to clarify. Uh, and we'll pick up with eighth and ninth grade course selection overview. Yes, sir. Is that correct? Yes, sir. One of the items that uh, uh, I think the board had requested was uh, a better understanding of the, the master schedule and what that process looks like, and so we can best tell that story in the transition from eighth and ninth grade. Uh, so I think that's what we're going to turn over to Delila uh, to help cover that part. Thank you, Dr. Russo. So yes, we do start our process very early. And so part of the information you're going to see is what we've been doing for almost four or five years now, or how we onboard the eighth graders before they even make a choice of what their high school years will be like. So with us, we do have Ms. Delila Legon and also Mr. J. Battles and our Dr. Ray Ortiz from CTE. And this is where the most and the robust part of the master scheduling and the course selection and the onboarding and just the awareness that the students are taken through by this department. Good afternoon, Board President Vasquez, board members, and Dr. Versta. We'll be going over a brief timeline. Master schedule is an ongoing process, but before we celebrate our graduates five years before, it's definitely a collaborative effort to make sure that we are supporting their self-selection of their endorsement. Um, by law, they must choose an endorsement. So we're gonna give a brief overview and then go into some specifics of some of the programs of studies or endorsements that we do offer here at Southwest. So we start pretty early. Uh, Texas Bill 18, House Bill 18, uh, mandates that we do offer some career college readiness in seventh or eighth grade. So we do here in Southwest, we do offer our PATHS, which is Pathways to Academic uh, Career Success. 
And so that is offered at eighth grade, and it is paired with what we offer at the feeder high school. So for example, at Southwest Legacy, we do offer uh, for the feeder campuses, Resnick and McCulliff, we do offer our automation robotics to really help them explore and figure out what they want to do um, as far as choosing their endorsement. And then at our Southwest uh, High School theaters at McNair and at Scobie, we offer the aerospace and aviation, which is the half year course. We definitely want to make sure that we're not uh, giving, causing constraints on the master schedule. So PAX is a half year course. So we always want to make sure that we pair it with another half year course. And then of course, traditionally, we do have our college and career fair at UIW when we have all our eighth graders tour the campus, hear about the endorsements, and actually bring in industry leaders to come and talk about the careers, what's available to them during and after high school. Another event that we do have um, is our counselors do go down to the eighth grade, our high school counselors, and make sure that they are visiting and talking about the endorsements. We know we're asking our eighth graders to choose an endorsement, so we wanna give them numerous opportunities to expose them to all the different course offerings that we offer here at South Southwest ISD. In addition, we also have our CTE program, our uh, department here at CNI that does go down to the middle school right before our UIW event and then also before students are completing choice uh, course cards to make sure that they are talking about the programs of study that we do offer. Then for our family, we do offer three Passport to Success events at each high school in the spring. And so we have our feeder high schools uh, host this event for our families at night. And so they have an opportunity to visit booth type tables and to hear firsthand what the program has to offer and also experience some hands on uh, different, just different uh, types of uh, programs, different types of activities that our students do do in high school. We want to expose them to those activities firsthand. Then of course, during the school day, we want to make sure our students are also coming to the high school and seeing firsthand the labs, the different classrooms that we have at our high schools, but during the day when students are actually in courses. And then that leads us up to our four-year plans. As our eighth grade uh, counselors are getting ready to talk to our students, they are actually developing their four-year plan for high school. So that's another event that happens in the spring for our eighth grade students. So we wanted to go over the endorsements that are offered at Southwest ISD and we wanted to kind of focus on the ones that are offered by CTE. So we wanted to show you a brief overview of the five endorsements that are offered and then the different career clusters that CTE offers. So under CTE, there's uh, STEM endorsements, the business and industry, and public service. And then within each career cluster, there are different programs of study. So for now, we're showing one example under the STEM endorsement, we have engineering. Under business and industry, we have agricultural fabrication. And under public service, we have barbering. So we just wanted to show the overview. Mr. Battles will now be showing all of our different programs of study and the career clusters that they fall under. So of course, we start with STEM because that's the best. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and, and really, STEM just incorporates in every program uh, that we offer here. But the, the STEM endorsement is pretty cut and dry. Uh, the endorsement is that overlying umbrella. The career cluster gets a little bit more specific. And then the programs of study that we offer under our STEM career cluster are cybersecurity and engineering. Uh, cybersecurity is one of those programs that we offer at multiple campuses because there's such a great need as far as what labor market says. And then engineering is offered at CAS STEM High School. So I won't go through every single one of these, but this is just again so that you can see what we at Southwest ISD offer. Uh, Southwest ISD has a very robust career and technical education program. Uh, so under the business and industry endorsement, we have uh, the following career clusters. And so those are the symbols that you see that say the ag, food, nutrition, uh, architecture, construction, audiovisual. And then listed below that are the programs of study that fall under those career clusters. And again, um, of these programs of study, they are specific to Southwest High School, but this is a district view. And so of these, um, you're looking at a perspective under the business and industry that's at Southwest High School, Southwest Legacy, and at CAST. 
And you'll see that we do have, again, based on labor market, we do have some duplicates within the high schools because there is such a high need according to labor market. So then we fall under public service, and public service are those, um, just as you see, they fall more under uh, what we do here, uh, health, health services, whether it goes into nursing or the medical field, uh, law, public service, we offer law enforcement, uh, human services. Um, this is one of the ones that we offer a statewide uh, barbering program, and then again, based on need, uh, we are also offering cosmetology, which is an outstanding program, that one is actually regionally approved. There's a higher need in this market area, and so we uh, applied with TEA, and so that was approved for us to be able to offer here. It's not necessarily a statewide program. And then education and training, um, which is a, is a strong program at Southwest Legacy. Do y'all have any questions about any of the programs? I do. So if you have an eighth grader that started this year, and they're in this business and industry, okay. and then they've gone into the agricultural diesel mechanics. They've picked that. So then you've already sat down with them at some point and said, these are all the classes you're going to need for the next four years? So that's one of the major, that, what, what we talked about in this timeline is really a very extensive process. Um, we begin through the course that all eighth graders take. All eighth graders take that PAX course. Mm -hmm. And then all eighth graders take that proxy course and they swap it semester so that they can receive it on both sides. Mm -hmm. But during the time frame of that, those two courses, the CTE department brings in guest speakers, they bring in colleges, we bring mm -hmm. in, especially in those programs that are less commonly known, Sometimes there are kids at Southwest High School that don't even know all the programs that are offered at Southwest High School. So those that we see, we'll bring those students, we'll bring teachers to come and talk to the students. And by having all the eighth graders together, what we do is on those event days, we merge the two classes together so that we can present to the entire eighth grade mm -hmm. throughout that first semester. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's ongoing all the way up to uh, when they finally go to that course selection, they do the course, course cards. Yes, and they do, they meet with their counselor one-to-one -one in that okay. four-year plan with online the four years that they'll be taking and what courses they'll be offering. And then each year in the spring as they're meeting, with like fall spring as they're meeting with counselors, then they'll go ahead and uh, have that conversation again to see what they've actually taken and what's coming up next. Okay, and then what about the eighth graders that have trouble just picking something? Do you suggest what they do or do they ultimately... Well, Ideally, and that's where we also bring the parents in, and that, okay. that's why also we have the parent night for the passport to success. So that way we make sure the message is getting through to every aspect that we can possibly offer. But when it comes down to it in the end, that counselor is able to have that one-on-one -on -one focus time. When we go as a department, we go and we speak to the kids too, and it's great. I mean, the kids are engaged. They mm -hmm. ask really good questions. We have them. Uh, see the list and they go through and they kind of circle their top three even when they're with us and they're asking those questions because they really want to know what they're going into but they really I think the process is strong where they have a pretty good idea as they get to that final point. Awesome. Thank you. And once they select a program of study these are the four these are leveled courses that are offered by each CTE program so each program of study has different levels of courses and they're based on progression of content um, there, so these are, we just wanted to show an example of the agricultural fabrication and each program of study has this type of design where it shows the different courses for each program. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we started doing last year was even, it's one thing to recruit our students but we also want to retain them. Mm -hmm. So just being really clear mm -hmm. to the students, you're in a CT program, this is your program of study, right now you're a freshman, you're in level one, these are the courses that are up, up and coming as you move through high school and these are the benefits, these, this is what you're gonna learn and just some of the outcomes that are based on each course. Awesome. And so just to put together uh, the master schedule process, after students have selected and they've met with their counselor to do their four-year plans, now it's time for them to do their student course request, what happens on, which happens on a student course card. So the counselor will meet with them. They will select the courses that they would like to be enrolled for the following year. After that, that's where our tallies come in, where the 
campus puts everything together, make sure everyone is appropriately scheduled. I wish I could say that once they hit that magic button that the master schedule is ready to go. It's not. It's definitely an ongoing process, the orchestration that the campuses have to do to make sure everyone is scheduled at the right period because we know we have students that are in athletics, in band, and we just want to make sure that we have enough course selections throughout the day to meet their needs. <coughs> so once that is done, we have a PEAMS rollover that happens where credits, if a student is in 10th grade, then they move over to the next grade, 11th grade, if they have enough credits. Mm -hmm. And then campuses will continue working. We'll have prep days. They will get a schedule of courses that they selected once they met with the counselor, and that's inputted in the system. Then the first day, because there are a lot of changes that go, and the last thing we want to do is provide students and get them confused by giving them different schedules. That's why we wait until the first day. They go to their first period class, and they do get their schedule. Thank you. Any Thanks. questions about master schedule or any of the programs we've discussed? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Great job, Dalia. 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 I'm having trouble pronouncing words today. Eighth to ninth grade, okay. Status of district enrollment. Yes, sir. Can look at uh, uh, a picture over a period of time, um, pre-pandemic, pandemic, post-pandemic, post -pandemic, hopefully, get beyond the pandemic, hopefully. Um, so to look at uh, our overall uh, student numbers, what they look like, so that uh, we have an idea. I think everything's trending the right way uh, this year. Uh, our numbers are looking better, and good, and healthy, uh, but we need them to be healthier. <laughs> So we have Adrian here to, to deliver that. He's going to bring you a PowerPoint just in case you don't want to see it on the small screen. Um, and so that way you'll have it um, handy for you. But uh, it goes along with our demographic study. So the things that, uh, the trends that we've been seeing in the demographic study, where some charter schools have come out and where our numbers are low. Um, that's what we wanted to show you a trend all the way back from 1819, a year before um, COVID happened. So that way you can kind of see our, our best year on record and where we currently are and how we're bouncing back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ready, sir? Yeah, I think somebody has my copy, though. Did I give a color copy to somebody? Or? I think that's it right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> 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 thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Okay. So the status, uh, the student enrollment status that uh, I wanted to share with you today actually takes uh, <coughs> enrollment numbers all the way back from 2018-19 through um, at the last Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, and so and I do have some current numbers for you as of the end of the day on Friday. But to start off with, I wanted to share with you what our pre enrollment looks like on campus uh, in our district. If you'll notice, I've got the... Um, section or the column in how pre-k 1920 highlighted the reason why i did that was because that that's our pre-covid year that's that's actually where we saw some of our uh highest enrollment numbers uh, when we talk about pre-k we're talking about uh an enrollment number of about uh, 718 across all campuses uh, and uh, when we look at comparing that to where we are this year we're looking at 665 as of last uh friday and uh, with, with a difference of about 50, 53 students uh, across the, uh, the district. And so kind of inching our way up to where we were back in 2019-20, but um, we're, there's still a difference of about 53 students across uh, all, this, all campuses in our district. <coughs> you'll notice here also to the right, when we talk about these differences, you'll notice where we've actually kind of closed that enrollment gap on some of our campuses with actually having uh, even more students this year than we did previously, uh, such as uh, Southwest Elementary and Sun Valley with a few extra students than what we had back in 2019-20. And then you're also seeing where we have a difference in the other direction. Mm -hmm. uh, at Big Country with 92 students in 1920, and um, our enrollment now on that campus in pre-K 67 is a difference of about 25. So you can kind of see the differences there, plus and minus, for each campus in the area of pre-K. Are there any questions about pre-kinder, pre-kinder numbers? And pre-K is one of our target areas because we can get them in in pre-K. Right. Then we tend to be able to keep them with great 
customer service and great academics. Um, and so those are important numbers for us to make sure that we get them in as soon as possible in the younger grades. Do we do, how many are we enrolling in uh, SA for pre-K? I'll have to pull those numbers. We had a few that uh, I'd have to pull those numbers to give an exact number. And and also how many they still how many slots they because I know they only give us so many slots. Right at fifty. Right at fifty. Are we using them all? Yes. Okay. Thank you. The uh, there's also a breakdown here uh, going back to 2018 19 of the enrollment numbers by <coughs> grade level as well because I think it's interesting mm -hmm. to also look at uh, where the differences are within the grade levels themselves. And so you'll notice here, and again, focusing on the all 1920 column uh, and comparing that to this year's uh, columns and enrollment numbers at each grade level, you can see kind of where we are with <laughs> some grade levels experiencing, uh, a, again, kind of a closing of that, that gap that existed and then <coughs> others kind of indicating or showing where we still have uh, fewer students on those campuses compared to where we were back in 1920. Uh, if you look, for example, over at fifth grade, you can see kind of the difference there uh, with 937 currently this year where we were at 1103 back in 1920, uh, about four years ago, three years ago. Four years ago. Uh, you also see some other differences at uh, fourth grade with 1921 this school year, and back in 1920 we had 1039. Uh, we do have uh, a uh, smaller gap with second grade uh, with a difference of about uh, 12 students and uh, one student in uh, first grade. And then you can also see kind of where those differences or what those differences look like in some of these other grade levels. So, so kinder is our only one that's up. Kinder, that right? com compared to 2019-20, it's still down uh, with 718 back in 1920 and 660. No, Kinder. Kinder was 833. Kinder's the only one that's up. <coughs> I believe it's up. I believe it's up. They discontinued pre-K last year, and so we were able to pick some kids up at the midpoint of the year. And then they stayed with us for Kinder. Hopefully, because we're not seeing these kids. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. What? That's elementary. We also did a breakdown by our middle schools as well in grades six through eight. Uh, and you'll notice here, again, uh, you can look at last school year uh, and uh, also compare it to 1920, uh, which we uh, tend to kind of go back to. And you'll notice still a, a little bit of catching up that we need to do there with 995 sixth graders in 1920 and then 948 this school year. Uh, 1048 for seventh grade, and then uh, we, we've actually seen 1084 uh, and then 1025 uh, this school year, and then 1045 to 1083. We'll see, we have seen an increase in our eighth grade, however, as yeah. far as enrollment. So you can kind of see what that looks like compared to the 1920 school year. And when you look at that 18 19 year, those are our, our seniors, juniors, and sophomores now. So that big number there mm -hmm. is going to show up in our high school numbers and why our high schools are so cool now. Mm -hmm. Any questions? High school. Uh, high school breakdown, uh, we also have here also uh, 9, 10 to the 11th and 12th grade. Uh, and again, you'll notice that uh, from last year we do see an increase uh, from the 21 22 school year to this school year. But if we take a closer look at a comparison, uh, in 1920, you kind of see where our numbers are there with 1225 um, back in 1920 to 1307 for ninth grade, um, 1103 and then uh, 1144. Uh, and then you can kind of see in 11th grade, we have actually fewer students at that particular grade level. <coughs> and uh, 12th grade goes actually back up uh, from 70 to 941. So mm -hmm. high school has seen an increase in student numbers across their grade levels in 9 through 12. Uh, with the exception of, of, of 11th grade here, where there's still a difference in the other direction. So, uh, but you can also see the totals uh, in 1920 at 4,134 compared to this mm -hmm. year, 4,332. So. Mm -hmm. The total student enrollment, I want to also look at it across campuses as well. So there's a breakdown here of uh, student enrollment across our different campuses. And this is just elementary. 
Uh, I'll show you middle school and high school here in just a second. But you can see here also, if you look at the total number, we're looking at 5,741 last year compared to this year at 6,106. Mm -hmm. But if you take a look at where we were in 1920, you still see kind of that difference uh, about 400 to about 300 students. So um, we, we're still, like I said, looking at um, the need to really bring those numbers up still at elementary to get us closer to where we were prior to uh, 2021 or into 1920. So, and here you can also see the difference. If you look at uh, where Big Country was at 665 and where they are today, you can see the difference there um, of about uh, 60, 71 students. And uh, of course, you can look at the same difference here with uh, Bob Hope and, uh, and some of these other campuses also. Um, we don't have as much of a gap with certain campuses. Like, if you take a look at Medio Creek at 610, back in 1920, and now 605, you can see that there's a little bit of a difference there. Uh, but take a look at Spicewood. If you look at Spicewood, we're at 517 back in 1920, and look where we are now at 586. So, again, we're seeing some increases with some of our campuses, and then um, still a little bit of a gap with some of our other campuses. Uh, we've got Sun Valley at 656 a few years ago, and now it's 648, um, up from last year though. But uh, uh, and then Southwest Elementary also seen an increase from 1920 as well of about maybe uh, eight students. So. Any questions about the numbers in elementary by campus? For middle school. Uh, again, comparing to the pre compared to the previous school year, we are seeing an increase in the number of students that have enrolled. If we look at, however, the number uh, in uh, 1920, uh, of course, you'll see uh, kind of a, a difference there. And so um, we, uh, we've got the breakdown also by the middle school campuses with McCulpin 730 and then 680 this school year. Uh, seeing an increase in student numbers at McNair uh, we're at 735 this year, where we were a few years ago, compared to where we were a few years ago. And then also uh, closing kind of up that gap at SCOBY, uh, 844, 1920 to 837. So a small difference there. But again, still the need to kind of work on getting those numbers up at, uh, at each of our campuses. So. so we've had an increase at McNair and at Elm Creek. So I guess we're monitoring that to see we're monitoring. Well, that's kind of the growth that's coming that's so from um, Cinco Lakes, right? Right. There, uh, it, like you can see all these numbers based off the demographic study. These are really close to what the yeah. market showed us. Uh, and so we monitor Elm Creek. Uh, like I said, I, I want to say it this way: where we have growth in our housing markets, you're mm -hmm. seeing those campuses right, close right. with the enrollment. But you're also still seeing enrollment going down in areas where we don't have. Right. Mm -hmm. So, what is the enrollment? <clears throat> what it? Where does it get? Like at Elm Creek, where would it? Where would it reach? Where we would be like, okay, we're gonna have to do something at that school. I would say if we're at eight fifty or more. Eight fifty. Okay. Really and at. then the <coughs> McNair. Oh, well, at one point we had twelve hundred kids okay. in there. Okay. All right. That's when we had before we had resident. We're almost at twelve hundred. Because so we have the a new subdivision going here, right by the water company. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. And As, do you remember how many? They projected uh, there? It was 300. 300? 300. 300. Uh, so that would be um, so Elm Creek or Southwest Elementary? or That would probably be, uh, be Elm Creek. Elm Creek, right. Yeah. So okay. We have to Unless we go back and redraw a lot. Yeah, we can redraw. Yeah, we're going to have to do that here yeah. pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> talk to the planning and look at Because you're, you're yeah. the one I'm almost worried about is Spicewood. Right. Mm -hmm. You're seeing, look at that girl, Spicewood. If yeah. all those, those apartments. If Vita out there comes on, we, that's the only place we can send those kids. And yeah. That's going to really explode on us really fast. Mm -hmm. Faster than any other. Elm Creek, I think you're seeing the Seacole Lakes and all that's uh, being built. But I think most of those kids are coming to. Yeah, Seacole Lakes. Seacole Lakes doesn't come yeah. go to Elm Creek, yeah. but yeah. these so new people probably well. will. Right. And then. Okay. Yes. McNair, McNair, Elm, uh, McCulloch, and Resnick have pretty but, good capacity. But okay. you also got to remember. When you when you post a, an A a rating of an A, people are going to drive their kids to the A school. So I saw I know there are a lot of single Lake kids that we they were going to go to Elm Creek, but then when they found out this school, they're driving them here. So it's just down the street. So it's just parents are willing to start driving their kids to where they're going to get the best education. And I will do it for y'all too. I, I got to get to the point where I can show y'all how a campus 
functional wise, financially, and operationally, where that campus needs to be, because those are decisions we'll have to look in the future. Where, mm -hmm. you know, even with when it starts to grow too much, or when it's increasing, you know, too much, we're going even. to make decisions because that's going to come up. It's going to be very hard because we're going to need to do a bond, and we're going to probably need to put elementary up there. But depending on enrollment, where you have decreases, you have decreases. It's going to be hard to open another elementary and fund one that's declining. Mm -hmm. Financially, because right, right now everybody knows the finances. Yeah. So, but those are all things that we'll have to discuss. Because all three over there in the area are declining, right? Correct. So maybe right. we can just have two. They declined because I know you're looking at 18, 19 data, but if you go back and look at their 15, 16, 16, 17, most of those schools are over 700. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that. They're just getting yeah. more mature neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. I just want to tell the board too. We, we in our superintendent meeting, we, <coughs> we look at this data, to have conversation around it. But with the exception of Comal, every district uh, student enrollment is increasing. Mm -hmm. uh, none of them have increased to the point, with the exception of Comal, uh, to pre-COVID numbers, mm -hmm. uh, which is the 18, 19, 19 mm -hmm. numbers. Mm -hmm. I would say we're as close to our pre-COVID uh, as any other district in Burke County, yeah. uh, but there's still work to do to, yeah. to make sure we keep those numbers going up. Uh, so Comal is up to their pre-COVID? Yes. yes. That's good. Our high school went through the winter wing of geographical area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we still go out and look for those students that were enrolled and didn't come back? Or yeah. We have a game plan around there. We'll also meet with an entity. I think that Mr. Vasquez and Mr. Carrillo gave us that information. So I think we had that meeting today. They did not confirm it, so we'll have it later this week or next week. Yeah. So we want to see what methods, uh, means and methods that they use and see if it's any different than what we use. We're fortunate to have uh, eight to nine Towels, as they're called right now, folks that go out. Uh, not every district has that grant and that opportunity. Um, so we have really good data where our folks are. Um, yeah. What we need to do is turn that data into actions uh, where folks are coming back. So we want to see what they have to offer and engage in the conversation. And we can bring that information to you because we did reach out to the majority after the demographic study to look into why people are not coming back or, or if they were. And we have a lot of kids that did come back. Yeah. With a great invitation. We're going to go into high school. So our high school numbers, uh, you'll see here, uh, again, if you look at the comparison between the 18, excuse me, between last year and this school year, you'll see some increases from 2089 to 2132. Uh, you'll see an increase at, at Legacy as well. Uh, we, we are seeing a decrease in, in CAS. Uh, if we go back to 1920, you'll see that uh, even there we're seeing increases also. So we're actually seeing some increases in our high school numbers from uh, 1920 at 4133 to currently at 4330. Okay, so this is where we're actually seeing an increase in student enrollment, mm -hmm. uh, in students who are interested in enrolling in, uh, in our district. So um, any questions about our high school? Our total enrollment for the district uh, is uh, is up here. You'll see, you'll notice that we, as of last Friday, we were at 13482. And uh, compared to where we were the same time last year, we were at 8708. So a difference of about 226. Mm -hmm. But again, still working on closing uh, that gap that, that we see there between the 1920 and our current school year. So uh, we are up from last year, where at this time we were at uh, 12976. Uh, and uh, just to uh, kind of update you on where we are now, uh, in running the numbers this morning, we were actually at 13512 now. So each year, each day, we're seeing a couple of things happening. We're seeing uh, students still registering come in. We also have we also have our visiting teachers in our T pals who are still locating students and, and bringing them back to register within our district. So a couple of efforts being made to really impact those numbers and to increase them. So. And what is our uh, average daily attendance numbers looking like? Right now, first two weeks are really good. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. It was 95 in 95. January. It was 93 last week. Okay. Uh, and, and the way the state realizes ours is they give us every six weeks, we turn in a number, and that's what they go by. They, they grade us by our six weeks average overall. Okay. Mm -hmm. So usually at the end of every six weeks, I'll, I can bring it to you all and show you what I'm seeing. And that's what I plug into the formula to see yeah. what our revenue is running. Mm -hmm. Can you send us an email every week just for FYI what our uh, average daily attendance is? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We actually send that thing out every day.
to us. Okay. Thank you. Right here? Yes, sir, on that item. Okay. And I apologize, I forgot to ask Dr. Versick if we could move the aquatics first because they have a UIL water pool of meeting oh. that I'm going to go to. Okay. So oh. I, I get to present. You know, I was wondering. Out. I'm like, uh, what right happened? They left. <laughs> so listen, I'm gonna give you calendars and don't get overwhelmed. I'm gonna kind of explain a little bit. They're, they're, just know that this is how busy the center is. <laughs> so this is the main calendar. Just don't want to get too far in detail because you'll, you'll kind of lose your mind on it. <laughs> wow. Like, yeah. Whoa. Are we getting, a, are we getting a strobe light? This is all the calendars you're getting. Holy smokes. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be a very uh, busy facility. Wow. Yes. That's very exciting. Huh? As long as it's bringing in some cash. No, that's what's raining. But this, yeah, like, <laughs> but the blue is actual events. This is for now. I'm just... The key oh, there's a legend up on top. Yeah, there's a legend. <laughs> <laughs> but when, when you print it into scale, it's like three are you pages wide. So like yeah. Are you, are you, Thank you. Lord. Uh, are you passing on magnifying glasses? Yeah, I'm going to cover them anyway with the slideshow. I also have a little PowerPoint that, that I uh, put on your desk, too, that I'm going to go through uh, on the Aquatic Center. Yeah. Uh, so it's a process, right, just like opening it. Uh, we're trying to make sure that... Uh, we're facing things in correctly so that we can mitigate all of like a lot of concerns and issues that we may <laughs> face. So we really, uh, really started with making sure we opened it and we could get our water pool teams yes. in there practicing. Because obviously we know that since April uh, deadline passed and it was supposed to be July and then we get to August. And so right now our water pool teams are in there practicing every morning from 6.45 to 9. I wouldn't look at all the calendars right now. Those are going to be for you to take home and look at it because I'm going to cover kind of okay. what it looks like. Okay. It's, it's really, it can be overwhelming when you start looking at all of them. Uh, so right now, the, the main programs that we're going to have at this aquatic center will be our high school programming. Uh, water polo is a new sport. It's, it's from 640 to 920. It started August 1st. That's going to go all the way to October 24th. As soon as water polo is over, the swim season starts. So the swim season will start in, in October, and now it'll run all the way to February. And then when February swim season's over, our club season starts. And so we'll, like other districts, Northside, Northeast, and Alamo Heights, Novo, they have club. So it's year round, just like volleyball and baseball. Uh, and so we almost, on that one calendar that looks crazy, if you look on there, the blue blocks are an, mm -hmm. event, an event. It's either a meet, uh, water polo matches, uh, all the way up to the, it's almost May. So they've scheduled out that this thing's gonna be used by our high school kids, varsity athletes, whether they're in water polo, swimming, diving, or a club. Uh, and so this thing will be used all years from like 645 to 920. Our varsity athletes will be, our, our athletes in high school will be in the, in the pool. Uh, and so the other thing that we're doing at the, the aquatic centers is we're doing our water safety learn to swim program. Uh, we are starting a middle school program. So after school, we already have kids signed up that we're gonna be picking up mm -hmm. that are gonna go, we're gonna pick them up, bring them over, we're gonna make sure they know how to swim first and then teach them all the techniques so they can be on the swim team, like a club team, and we'll compete against each other in the different four middle schools, and then they'll play water polo as well. So we're gonna do everything that the varsity athletes are gonna do, we're gonna do it with the middle school kids. Amongst themselves. Amongst themselves. Each other, I'm each saying. Each other. Yes. And then there's gonna be opportunity them to join our club teams so that they can compete against around the area in the city and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the last one is the club opportunities we're gonna offer our students, that's after hours. Uh, and also community programs. The U.S. was quite a unit. Quite a, yes. yes. Uh, so school programs. So this is kind of like what's happening starting, uh, obviously, August 1st. You've only had the water polo teams in there, 645 to 9, uh, Monday through Friday. And then after, what's been going on is all the calendars you're looking at. How do we get people in? And so we want to phase it in, right, so that we're not overlapping, that we don't have community there when we have our students there. Uh, so we're phasing these things in. Starting actually today, uh, we have Sun Valley, I believe Sun Valley there right now. Oh. Uh, and so from 920, so our high school kids leave at nine, they go back to school, they go to their classes, and at 920 we've already bussed over our first elementary group, and it's the fourth graders. This whole uh, fall will be fourth graders because they're test, they're, they take a test, and so they didn't want to have the fourth graders be out there in the spring, so the second graders will go in the spring. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. So we'll have every elementary and every fourth grader be a part of the Swim to Learn program. And they're gonna be, and our, our people that are operating that are actually the, the lifeguards and the, the, the lesson people in that, in that center. Uh, and then also today, we'll have pick up our first round of middle school uh, students. Mostly sixth graders that are not playing sports because sixth grade, they don't get to play football or basketball. So any kid that wants to be a part of something after school, uh, we're gonna start picking them up. And from three to five, we'll have middle school swim. Uh, it'll be swimming, it'll be diving, and then it'll be water polo. Just, it's gonna be a different series, like an intramural type deal. Do we take them back to their campus or their parents no, pick them up? So they had to sign, uh, we'll pick them up with buses, but their parents have to pick them pick up. Pick them up for the Okay, that's great. Uh, yeah. so Are, they do, they, have, do they get to pick the sport or you're cycling them well, into we're everything? Have like a, I think the first couple of weeks is basically water safety. Because uh -huh. we don't know what, you know, sixth graders. What they know. Because, you know, they're, they're still they probably have to do okay, so, yeah, yeah, so there's going to yeah. be some training and water safety and getting the kids acclimated to water. And then they'll be in competition swim and things. Be, and then they'll move into water polo. Mm -hmm. It just depends how fast they can get these kids swimming and getting yeah. that strong swimmers. Sure. Uh, and then uh, even tonight, they're starting their uh, five to eight. We'll have a club swimming. Uh, so any student athlete that has signed up for club swimming will start that uh, in the evenings. Right now, that'll probably be a little slower because most of our varsity athletes are in that, and so we're not bringing them back twice. It's, it's like running tracks, practice yeah. twice. Because yeah. they're already yeah. practicing in the morning. But uh, especially when our middle school kids really get into that, we'll have clubs for me. Uh, and then on September 20th, we'll open up for our community program uh, from five to seven. So you see from 6.45 to 9.20, we have our varsity in there. Nine o'clock, we have our varsity athletes. Mm -hmm. From 9.20 to 1.20, we have our uh, elementary kids. Mm -hmm. We figured we have to give the, our people working there lunch at some point. <laughs> and then at 3 o'clock, we're bringing in our middle school kids from 3 to 5. And then 5 to 8, we have club. Mm -hmm. And then from 5 to I said five to 7, we're going to open up to the public Monday through Friday. Monday through Thursday, we'll have 5 to 7, we'll be a lap swimming and open swim. And then from 6, 6, 6 to 6 30 on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we'll have water aerobics for any community members that come to the water aerobics. Is that the uh, 60 and over group? Yeah, all right. The five to seven. <laughs> From five to seven right now, that's anybody that enough. wants to come to the facility, wants to come swimming, wants to try it out, wants to try water aerobics, we'll, we'll start opening that. Ready? What we'll are we expand charging? that as it gets going. It's I on the it. back. Uh, that is so, so exciting. Yes, ma'am. So I'm feeling faint. Five to seven <laughs> is uh, on the other paper. Did you say that was club? Yeah, it's five to eight is club. They'll be in once they'll be in the deep end part okay. of the pool. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we'll have it's we'll, there we're gonna have it more secured. We'll have our people there. Okay. And then on five to eight, like five to seven, we'll have one section where it's okay. Pretty, so the same pool. Swim, okay. And then we'll have the little instruction pool where the awesome. people might come. Oh, okay. Yeah. So so the really the only time that we may have intermingle of of community and the evening club is 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 gonna be in that time period. Five yeah. Eight. Okay. Uh, and then on October twenty fourth. Uh, going through this day and working this whole schedule out to make sure that you know, we're all the kinks because we bring the kids in, we have a good timeline, and then buses run late and this. Yeah. And so we're going to have to work through all the, especially the middle school program, how many kids actually, if we get a lot of kids, we're going to have to do something different. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's that's something we're going to have to wait and play out. But then on October 24th, water polo ends. Uh, I think we'll work out all our kinks, and then we'll be able to open up during the day, uh, like two to three, another time for community to come in, do like adult swim. Uh, another session of water aerobics. Uh, and so that'll kind of like, that's gonna run the whole year. But remember, mm -hmm. this is gonna be flexible and we're gonna adapt. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, based on what Dr. B, and I, I've told the aquatic staff about it, and Coach Wagner is not to say it this way, but we wanna make sure our athletes are first because first. there's competition. Mm -hmm. And then we wanna make sure that we have our learn to swim running good because we want our kids to learn how to swim because we wanna get them excited about the pool. And then we wanna build our middle school program so we want to offer to the community and get it as much as open as possible. But right now the schedule is really tight and it's like really full. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of kids in that pool throughout the day. And so we're working through those and seeing what works best for us. Uh, and we also don't want to over promise and under labor. So mm -hmm. we don't want to say we're open all these times and then we start shutting it down because right. we got things going on. I think this is great. Yeah. I mean, it's relatively and, quick too. And then every uh, every Saturday from here to the end of school years, there's some kind of end. So like in Waterfall, our teams might play on like Legacy and Southwest might play party night, but our district uses our pool. So like on Saturday, we'll have Taff, uh, Stevens playing Holmes in there because that's the way the, the seasons work. It's whoever's in your district. There's only so many pools. It's not like they have all these football stadiums. Right. So they do get to play home games. So like one night, Stevens might be a home team against the Southwest Dragons. Right. Because of 
notice everybody uses that. So every Saturday during water polo, is, we have some kind of event going on. And especially in swim season, we'll have that thing running like swim meets like all day long. And it's Saturday. just Saturdays though, right? Saturdays is, Saturdays is mostly competition. We'll have other nights that they'll have a competition like water polo. Like last Friday, they played water polo on Friday. Okay. But even on Saturdays, some other teams were using our pools. Is it completely closed on Sundays? Yeah, yeah you gotta have a day off, right? Yeah, for everybody. Like Chick fil A. Yeah, I don't know they would, how much they would work for us if we didn't work on Sunday. Uh, so, yes, ma'am. So, the family of four summer pass, it's a great deal, right? $40. Yes. But um, if they're students, they're free anyway, right? Correct. So, okay. right now, the people that are free are all employees. Uh -huh. They have an ID card, they can prove they're employee. Hopefully, we know them all. But sometimes it's got a lot of people to go. Every student that's a student at the master class, just a student in our district, free. And anybody with a normal card, you can get free. Okay. Oh, so this great. would be the family of four would be if they don't go to our school. If they don't go to our or school, if they're basically. under, is there an age? No, uh, it's, it's basically. Five to 18, okay. Yeah, if you're five and under, we're not charging. Right. Mm -hmm. So anybody that has kids five and over, they got 20 or something like that. Five kids. Yeah. Uh, there are six, seven members, they get one pass for anybody. Yeah, okay. Awesome. And we, a lot of these, we look at like north side, northeast, mm -hmm. you know, and the SDA is moving to that. We kind of came to like a middle ground. Yeah. Uh, and That's great. So these would be the fees for people that are not really, uh, you know, school district employees, uh, students, or uh, Emerald Park boards. Okay. Why, why a punch card? What does that mean? Punch card? Because you have some people that are swimmers from around the city that want to come use like a, like a gold's gym. Mm -hmm. Oh. It's so like, it's like, we, we give punch cards to like our team gets them for golf. Mm -hmm. Like when we go to practice facilities, like my son, we get a punch card. He gets to go play for a round of three, and we go to pay for these punch cards to okay. get the kids so they go practice. So like these, there's some groups out there that really like to do synchronized swimming, and they will come to our and want to use our facility, and we will sell them a punch card so they come in, they punch a card. Okay. So and they go during pub, pub during the public time. During the public time. Only during yeah, the public right. time. Instead of paying four dollars every time they come, we'll sell them a punch card. But they may be somebody that's a frequent flyer. They sure. come all the time. Or they can do lap swim, right? Correct. Okay. And so just we'll, find ways to help them out and get them sure. a card so they can come and shake. Can we wear floaties? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, today, if you, if you go over to the Western Aquatics, everyone has a life jacket. Serious? Life jackets for everyone. Oh, yeah, they so do cute. have floats if you yeah. need a belt or whatever. I'm pretty sure floaty. they're going to have them. So that's your one's the arm. I need that, yeah. So in the summer, in the summer, and we'll the best. Our, because the board hopefully will again pass the summer wellness hour for our employees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll open it three times during the day for all our employees to go over oh, there that's wonderful. Uh, and swim. So pretty much the rest of the day is going to be open. The only thing the I'm questioning is your learn to swim. It's only in the morning, and most pools have it like all day long because you, you get only like a two week class, what you pay for, right? Well, we're, the we're not doing it. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. in the learn to swim. Yes. That's, well, our, that's, our, that's, that's our, our kids. kids. No, no, from I'm not our talking elementary. about our kids. I'm not talking about our kids. I'm talking about summer when yeah. they have the learn to swim. Hmm. And if we put that on there right now, that's also subject Because our change. kids will only go for like two weeks. Yes. They're not going to go. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. So right here where it says 930, 11, oh, the swim lesson. We had a really, we just put it like, kind of give you a Yeah, because it's like, it's not enough time. I know yeah. that most pools, I took my kids to different pools. Correct. And they have them 9 to 11, mm -hmm. 1 to 3, you know. <laughs> Five to I'm seven, they have them all day long. Correct. We can do that. <laughs> right now, we, I'll be honest with you, transparency is just, we kind of just put some stuff together for summer because we, we're just trying to get yeah. into the fall. Mm -hmm. And with all that, and so then we'll you have to summer. remember with learn to swim, you don't learn any, you don't learn much in the two time weeks. period, two weeks. Yeah. You could still be in bubbles, you mm -hmm. know. You have to keep paying for another two weeks, another two weeks, etc. I understand like Sunday is being closed, but what if we have a holiday or you're going to be open for a holiday? The community. When our schools are open, they have the same, our people that are working at it have the same calendar as we have. So, so uh, what about spring break? So you. We you probably will open during spring break. Well, because we're probably going to have kids, like we'll, like during uh, Christmas break, the kids will be swimming and swimming because they got practice. Yeah, and club so, swim uh, practices even during the holidays. Yeah. So uh, as far as open to public, we'll have to, this is our first time running a facility like this, so you kind of like, it almost be like oh, our football and everything is closed up during those times. We, they're not open to the public when we have it locked up. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to figure out a schedule. We may be able to open it uh, and say, okay, uh, it's just staffing and making sure we have mm -hmm. enough lifeguards. This is another hurdle we're dealing with right now, lifeguards, because all the lifeguards we've hired are, are actual uh, students that, that go to school. So yeah. they're at the high school right now. So that's why we really can't open during the day, because all our instructors are working. We could probably open it, and have, but if we need some lifeguards, there's not uh, Southwest ISD students. 
mm -hmm. losing my college yeah. kids. And so that's, yeah. that's a little harder right now to find because uh, a lot of them started back to college and so they're not they kind of available. So that's kind of like a hurdle we're dealing with. We're, I think we have enough kids in the high school to be open in the evenings after hours. It's just that those during the day and uh, times where you know, their, their class mm -hmm. would yeah. open without uh, their support. But you got to have three lifeguards pretty much when we have anybody that's not like a, a, a Southwest ISD student. Because uh, right now we have our instructors there and, and many of them are lifeguards. Anybody else outside, our liability is that we have yeah. coverage for them. Mm -hmm. insurance. Well, and when you have community swim, the lifeguard has to be there watching Correct. too. So Absolutely. we can't. It doesn't matter that they're lifeguards and they're there working. They've got to be watching. watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, questions on uh, oh, the aquatic center? <gasps> Very so, exciting. So we're planning on. Uh, we're probably going to reach out, and push something out, at least for the community park, to let everybody know. Uh, we've already done the other stuff. We've already pushed out that we're going to swim. We've got all the kids signed up. We have a calendar for that. We've been uh, recruiting at the middle schools. We're recruiting in the high schools for more swimmers too. We want to build a program uh, and, and, and get all those things going. But now we'll be like, here's what we're doing for the community. Here's when you come out and see the pool. We're, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And you're going to do life skills too? Yes. We have, we're working. There's a little more logistics to that. We actually yeah. have some. Uh, Special uh, instructors come out with us and help. So everybody's worked through that. So they'll have some time. They'll them. just be in the little pool, maybe? Yeah. Just, well, I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm positive that's where they'll start because that's where we have kind of the ADA ramps and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I understand it's going to take like two to three maybe years have to before we get this down path. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a good way to kick That's a great master schedule. I know it yeah. takes a lot to yeah. do something yeah. like that. Well, and, well, and, and people not. That, so Greeny, yeah. awesome. he's awesome. He's not here. He should be taking the credit. So this yeah, is not me. he did all I that. Just delivered it for him because <laughs> he had to go to the. Please let him know we said thank you, yeah. and, and yeah. we're excited with yeah. him. And yeah, super excited. excited. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he was. I was like, man, this, you sure? This is the, he sent this calendar. I took a senior staff. He said, this is the response I got. Like, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna happen to us at the board meeting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's thank very you. Very excited. Very busy. Lord, do you have one more thing? Lord, do you have one more thing? Water polo team. We get to wear those orange life jackets. Our floaties. Well, the only water polo I did in college, we actually used inner tubes. We did. Okay. Anyone have anything? I can't believe it filled up that good. The schedule. You also have the drama. I think there's an error in dates on, on the football teams. Right yeah, no, I think the, that the games are right, but the oh. dates are wrong. Yeah. The bottom two. Oh, okay. That should be. Hi, Hi Jesse. Hey. What the hell is? That's, that's recorded. It was Jesse's fault. That's recorded. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone, for your three hours. This meeting is now adjourned. 1 o'clock.